When I was 12 years old, my older sister and I were left alone for the weekend. I was eagerly waiting for a friend to come and pick me up, but she hadn't arrived yet, and I was starting to get restless. Suddenly, there was a knock on the door, and I assumed it was my friend. So, I hurriedly went to answer it without looking through the peephole first. To my surprise, there was a man standing there with a clipboard, claiming that he needed to check our gas meter. At the time, I didn't notice that he wasn't dressed like a city official. He was wearing a green and purple shirt with bold stripes, like the host of Blue's Clues. I was so preoccupied with my friend not showing up that I just told him, yeah, sure, whatever you need to do. He came in and immediately went up the stairs to where our bedrooms were and walked into the open door of my room, the typical girly girl room with pink and glitter. Thank God my sister came down the stairs at almost that exact moment. She said, oh, is that Daphne's dad? Why is he going upstairs? And I complained about how Daphne wasn't here and was going on about how unreliable she was when my sister cut me off. Wait, wait, if Daphne isn't here, who is that? I said, he's here to read the gas meters. Her face turned white. She flung open the front door and dragged me out, hand clamped over my protesting mouth. She said, our gas meters are outside. Neither of us had a cell phone. It was the 60s and obviously weren't going back in the house to call authorities on the landline phone. Then, my ever-resourceful sister had a stroke of genius. A man was walking right by our house, and she motioned him over. She called out loudly into the house. Oh, Dad, it's good you were home. A man from the city is here to read the gas meter upstairs. And just like she'd hoped, this man on the street said, What are you talking about? The man in the striped shirt heard us and bolted out of the house. The man on the street asked us repeatedly if we were okay, if we needed him to stay and wait in the yard with us until our parents came home. He was very sweet. We were so startled that we barely thanked him before slamming and locking the doors and windows. As irate as my sister was that I let someone in the house, she begged me not to call the authorities because my parents left her in charge and she was worried she'd be in trouble. I didn't want to catch any heat from carelessly allowing some guy in, so I was on the same page. Three weeks later, a girl in our community went missing. Same M.O. She was home alone, and authorities found the door open and no signs of forced entry. My sister and I discussed our options, but deep down we knew we had no choice but to come clean. It was clear that the man who had come to our house was not there to check the gas meter. We told the police everything. I don't know if it ever helped, but they did tell us they had reason to believe it was the same man. They also tracked down the man who helped us on the street. Turns out, we already knew him. He worked in the butcher shop. We just didn't recognize him. He was lifelong friends with the family after that. Our parents were mortified. They weren't angry at us, just glad we were okay. They found the girl and say she'd been held for a few days and then killed. They never caught the man. He was in what appeared to be his early 30s and the 60s, so in any case, he has to be dead by now. So, I'm a 24-year-old male and have lived on my own for about two years now. I have a small house I'm able to pretty comfortably afford. In this house, I have an attic area. At a guess, I'd say it's about 5 by 5 meters in size, and you can only really stand in there in the very center. Anyway, I work the night shift at a factory, so I usually come back at around about 8 a.m. I was coming home last Thursday during a heavy storm. I got into the house and just went to sleep. When I woke up, I went on my phone and saw that I was so tired that I didn't check my notifications. 
I have a ring camera outside my door, which shows me anyone who would have come to my room. I saw that it had been tripped at 7.42 a.m. I got into the house at around 8 a.m. I checked the video and saw that it was a man. He was pressed right up to the door and was fumbling around with a door handle. He did this for about 10 seconds until he spotted the camera. Once he did, he very quickly scuttled away. This unsettled me, but didn't entirely creep me out or anything. I got up to go make some food and discovered something in my kitchen. My back window was open. I of course instantly began having the thoughts of a home intruder, but slowly chilled out as I convinced myself I had left it open. The rest of the day consisted of just noticing small things that didn't seem right and scaring myself. I had to leave for the shift at 10pm and I was watching some TV at 9 o'clock-ish. I spotted something that made my heart leap into my throat. Out of the corner of my eye, I could see it. My attic entrance was slowly being slid open. I can so vividly remember that I began questioning my sanity. Surely I was just hallucinating or something. I looked over at it and absolutely saw something that made me so much more scared. I saw fingers wrap around the hatch and begin moving it more. I didn't know what to do. I could feel the panic beginning to really get to me and I wasn't sure if I should leave the house and call the police or if I should try and yell at whoever was up there. I chose a mixture of both. I began dialing 911 and ran to my bedroom where I could lock the door. As soon as I began running, I heard the hatch get almost teared off with the speed they moved it and I arrived at my bedroom door. I looked down the corridor and watched for a second, seeing only a little slice of the blackness up in my attic, and I saw the human hand still holding on to the sides of my ceiling. I yelled, Whoever is there, I am calling the police, and I have a gun. I do not own a gun. If you take a step out of there, I will shoot you. The adrenaline was really making my hands and voice shake, but I tried sounding as tough as I could. Then I saw something that I truly do not think I will ever forget. The hand slipped back into the dark, and then he dropped down. I slammed my door shut and locked it as quickly as I could. The call went through, and I was able to get on a line with the police, and they dispatched officers to my house. I told them I didn't know if the man was armed or not, and the dispatcher told me to stay on the line. I heard the man walking up to my door and rattling the door handle. He also seemingly went through my cupboards in my kitchen as I heard a lot of commotion there. I don't know why he stayed. I would have just left the house, but he stayed right up until the police came in and arrested him. Apparently, he was a homeless man and was armed with a knife from my kitchen. He had recently been seen in the area trying to get into other houses. Truth be told, I'm very frightened to sleep still. I now sleep with my bedroom door locked and all my windows closed. I also sleep with a knife under my pillow. I know that this is unlikely to ever happen again, but I just cannot forget the way he dropped down from my attic. <laughs> This happened a few years ago, in my old one-person flat. I had a strange feeling that something wasn't right for a few days. I was sure that the food in the fridge was less than what I'd put back the last time, and I found pillows from my couch on the floor, among other things. I lived alone back then, so I thought that there wasn't anyone else with access to my flat. Well, one night, I woke up around one in the morning, sweating and certain that I had woken up from a nightmare, although I didn't remember it. Since I was drenched in sweat, I decided to take a shower. I put my phone in the bathroom for music, turned on the water, and enjoyed my shower. A few minutes in, I heard the door move. I never closed it, but 
it still never moved. I took a look at the shower curtain and saw a shadow against it. A look at my phone confirmed. Someone was there, since I could clearly see a reflection in my screen that showed someone standing next to the shower curtain. It took a lot of effort not to scream and to act like I didn't notice anything, all while silently taking the shower head off its holder and turning the water all the way to hot. I am still impressed with my quick thinking. Our water got really hot when you turned it all the way up, and a few seconds later steam was rising, and the water hurt my feet flowing to the drain. I turned around, ripped the shower curtain open, and held the shower head right at the person behind. It was a woman, and she screamed in pain. I whacked her in the face with the shower head and jumped out of the shower. I ran to the door, took the key out of the lock, and locked it behind me. A little later, she started banging on the door, but the door didn't give. I called the cops and went to the kitchen to get my big kitchen knife, just for safety. I felt like my throat was closing up when I saw it missing and realized there was only one place where it could possibly be right now. The police came and arrested the woman, who turned out to be the former tenant who was evicted for not paying rent. She had made a copy of the key and entered the flat when I was at work, and sometimes at night. It's possible that she was the one who woke me up in the first place. I also found the knife later in the bathroom, so she definitely brought it with her and either the police disarmed her, or she dropped it herself at any point. Honestly, I don't even want to think about it. Ever since then, I always insist that the locks are changed when I move into a new place.